and we're recording. In this video I'd like to introduce you to build systems. These are the systems that are going to compile our code, remembering that we've got more than one source code file that's making up our code, and remembering that we've got more than one module that's making up our executable very often. But they can also produce documentation based on what's in our code, they can run tests across our code and all sorts of other things that we can teach them to do. So the way I'd like to introduce this topic is by saying that you're not going to be the only person who's going to be compiling your code. For starters, you're working in groups and so your group members are going to need to be able to compile your code. But also, your group is working on a feature but there's lots of other groups that are working on other features and all those other groups are going to need to be able to build your code. So you are one of 60 or more people who are going to be able who are going to need to be able to build the code that you're producing. But there's also another chap. There's a chap that you haven't met before, but you're going to meet him in the next couple of weeks. And this chap is a robot butler called Jenkins. Jenkins' job is to compile your code over and over and over and over and over again and run tests on your code over and over and over and over again. In fact, whenever someone changes something in the code, Jenkins, the robot butler, is going to compile it and test it to see if anything is broken. So that way we will discover that things have broken quickly rather than building on broken foundations. But if we want Jenkins to be able to build our code, we need to be able to tell Jenkins how to build our code. And we don't really want Jenkins to have to go and click a lot of buttons all over the place. We would prefer to be able to give Jenkins a command. This is the command you run that is going to build our code, that's going to compile all of the source code files, combine all the modules, run all of the tests, do all of the different things that are involved in checking that the code is in, in an OK state. So let me give you a brief history of build systems. And uh, let's start in the first part with one that you may have come across before if you've done any C programming. And this one is called Make, and it dates back to 1977. So it's 40 years old, but it's still in use. Sometimes we get things right in technology and technology hangs around. And this was a case where the technology had a really good idea in it and it has stuck around. Now, Make's great idea was, well, OK, we usually do have more than one thing that we want to build. We have lots of different source code files to produce the modules. We've got lots of different modules to produce the executable, but we've also possibly got to want to build documentation based on annotations that are in our code, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to call something that we want to build a build target. And we're going to realise that some of these build targets might depend upon other targets. So if we want to build an executable from our modules, then we need to have built our modules. And so we're going to have this idea that we can build our build targets and it's going to build any of the ones it needs to that they depend upon. That it needs to is very important here. So if you're new to programming, you've probably only done small programs and you have probably had quite quick compiles. Well, in days gone by, or if you're working on very large systems, compiles could take a really long time. So when I first graduated from my undergraduate degree and I went to work for a company that did software for telephone companies, the products that we were working on, uh, if I wanted to build it on our slightly old development server at the time, it would take a bit over an hour. That's not just go get a cup of coffee, that's go get lunch. And a, a little while later, they bought a newer, faster development server a few months after I started. And then, well, compile times got pretty quick. They were down to 45 minutes. You can still have a pretty decent lunch in 45 minutes. Um, so there's only so many times in the day that you can go, well, OK, I've now got to compile everything and it's going to take 45 minutes before I can even see if it works. Oh, um, that gets quite frustrating. So instead, uh, Make realises that, well, if you've only changed code in one module, I don't need to recompile all of the other modules. The code hasn't changed. The output of those modules uh, won't have changed. So all I need to do is recompile the module 
that you've edited the code in and then combine that module with the other modules that it uses to produce the executable. And that could be a lot quicker. That might only take one or two minutes. And so that's back down to, OK, now just go get a cup of coffee or just hmm, think about what you need to do next. Uh, so this really saved developers an awful lot of time. Um, one of the one of the, 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 the great advances, if you like. So let's now consider what's in a make file. Well, if we're going to have these build files, uh, sorry, if we're going to have these build targets, then we need to describe what the targets are. And we also need to say what the targets depend on if they depend on other targets or if they depend on some combination of source code files. And then we need to say, and by the way, if you want to build them, this is how you build them. This is how you build this target from its inputs. So let's pop across to a really small example of a make file. And up, up the top, it says CC equals GCC. That's saying that the C compiler that we're going to use is called GCC, the GNU C compiler. And C flags, some flags that we're going to pass later on, are minus G. Um, but then the next thing we say is we say we have a target, and this target is called all. And if I say to make all, well, what's it depend on? What are you going to have to make to make all? Well, it depends on hello world, and that's the executable that we're going to produce, the, the little executable called hello world that will print hello to the console. And so, OK, to make all, you have to make hello world. Hello world, that executable, that's a target. That's something that needs to be made. And how do you make hello world? Well, hello world depends upon hello world.o. That's the compiled version of hello world.c, but it's not been through the linker yet. If you're doing C programming, you compile your code and then you link your code. OK, and if you've got hello world.o and you want to produce hello world, the executable, how do you do it? Well, you invoke GCC, you give it the linker flags, LD flags, uh, you give it the minus O, and um, the dollar at dollar um, dollar hat is to do with the other parameters that you're passing to the C compiler, uh, which are pretty much, you know, OK, and what's your input and what's your output? Uh, so you need to say that you're giving it hello world dot O and you want hello world. OK, and that is then dependent on another target, hello world dot O. That is an output. It's a target. It's produced by the C compiler acting upon hello world.c so underneath we've got another target hello world.o which depends upon hello world.c and in this case the way you produce it is again to invoke the c compiler but this time passing it the c compiler uh, sorry the compiler flags and with the minus c option to say that we're doing a compile stage here please down the bottom there's another target there called clean and we can see this depends on FRC, which is a target that doesn't have any dependencies. So clean is something that we want to be able to run whenever. Um, it doesn't have any dependencies so that it will run even, you know, without any timestamp checks to see, do I need to run this? And what make clean does is, well, it's removing hello world, the executable, and it's removing hello world dot O. So it is removing all of the generated outputs and just leaving us with our source code. So in most uh, projects with most build systems, you want to have a clean target that is going to throw away all of the generated outputs and get back to just having the source. So that next time you do a compile, so if you go make clean and it's ditched all the stuff it remembered from earlier, and you then say make all, well now it's doing a compile from scratch. It's not trying to reuse things that it produced earlier, uh, but thinks that it can reuse. And that make clean and make all is the one that would take 45 minutes on the on the, the new development server back when I first graduated from my undergraduate degree. So how do we invoke this? Well, what we say is we say make uh, followed by a target. So make clean to remove all the generator generated outputs or make all uh, in order to run uh, all of the targets or at least that you know that top target called all which would make uh, hello world the executable and would cascade down and build everything.